Hello and welcome to Waste Days Waste and Climate Panel. I'm Zoe Lenkovich, Senior Technical Advisor and Head of Communications at Waste Aid. In the lead up to COP26, Waste Aid is building an online hub at wasteaid.org forward slash COP26, where we are exploring diverse perspectives on the links between waste management and climate change. Charles Aylmay is President and Chief Executive of Hutamaki and has kindly contributed an article to the Waste Aid website titled Waste as a Valuable Secondary Resource Material, The Paradigm Shift, which we recommend reading to accompany this short interview. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link in the description below to the article. Now, before we dig into some of the points you raised in your article, Charles, I wonder if you could please introduce yourself. Thank you, Zoe. Good morning. Uh, my name is Charles Eolme. I'm the CEO of uh, Hutemaki since now two years and a half. I uh, started at Hutemaki in uh, April 2019. I have been more than 20 years in the packaging industry. Uh, packaging for me is a, is a passion and uh, beyond packaging, the passion I have is for sustainability, sustainability, how to protect the, the future of, of the planet. And in that sense, that's where we've been so, so proud to work with um, Wasted. Maybe a couple of words on, on Hutemaki. Hutemaki is a, a Finnish company from origin, but we do our business uh, globally, um, uh, actually operating in 36 countries around the world. Um, we are an advanced manufacturer of um, packaging, particularly for food, but not only for, for food applications. And uh, we are operating globally, as I said, in with uh, three key technologies in terms of packaging, the uh, paperboard conversion technology, the molded fiber technology, and the flexible packaging uh, technology. We have been, uh, if I give uh, numbers of 2020, just as a reference, um, we were uh, of a size of 3.3 billion euro revenues with uh, 18,000 uh, employees. And maybe a last word about Utemaki. We just uh, completed the acquisition of a very good company uh, of flexible packaging called Elif, uh, based in Turkey and, and Egypt. Thank you so much, Charles. That's great. Um, so digging into your article a little then, Utemaki recently had its climate targets validated by the Science Based Targets Initiative. Your targets include waste collection and recycling infrastructure to minimise the impact of packaging on the environment. Please, could you tell us about your roadmap to get from here to 2030 and what emphasis Hutamaki is putting on infrastructure for waste and recycling? Very good question. Um, waste recycling is um, the name of the game, if I may say. Circularity is the name of the game when it comes to, to sustainability. Uh, particularly sustainability of, of packaging. But we need to think about sustainability in a very broad um, perspective. And, uh, and I'd like to, to give you a couple of, of elements. First, starting with saying why we have applied to the, to the SBTs, um, to the um, uh, science-based targets. Uh, so we did that when, back in 2020, we launched our new 2030 strategy. And we have put sustainability at the center of this strategy. Our strategy is, of course, a growth strategy, a profitable growth strategy, but we believe that there is no uh, sustainable strategy uh, or sustainably profitable growth strategy without a, a strong um, emphasis um, on sustainability. Sustainability has become a license to operate um, in, in our industry, in any industry, I would even say, um, and we have taken that extremely seriously, putting it at the center of our strategy. So when we did that, then we believe that uh, we need to not only speak about what we're going to do, but as well commit. And, and a way to commit is to have, of course, uh, some very clear targets over the time of this 2030 strategy, uh, but it's as well committing to um, targets which are uh, publicly known and with organizations which are renowned in, in, in the world. And that's why we have, we have applied to the, to the SBTs. Uh, and, and our um, science-based targets have been recently approved by the uh, Science-Based Targets Initiative that is very, very well known. We are committed to limiting the uh, global uh, temperature rise to well below two degrees in, in our operations and in the value chain. 
So I'll, I'll come back maybe to what it means. What it means is that in the scope one and two of our, um, of our operations, we are committing a, by 2030 to reduce um, our emissions by 27.5% in absolute terms. So while we will be growing our business, obviously, um, we will be in absolute terms reducing our emissions by 27.5%. And, and that's, you know, with a, a range of, um, a wide range of initiatives and actions. Um, one of them, for instance, is we are committing, and we started from 0% uh, a couple of years ago, we are committing to 100% renewable electricity in all our 81 sites in the world by 2030. The second aspect of our SBTs is the scope three. So involving not only our operations, but at the entire value chain we work with. And there we are committing in our scope three a, a reduction of a, the greenhouse gas emissions from um, our business by 13.5% in the same time frame. Again, um, as an absolute uh, in absolute terms, we have as well committed that a, a, we will work with um, suppliers. That 70% of our suppliers, in terms of 70% being measured in terms of spend whether it is services or, or products, that 70% uh, of our suppliers will as well, like us, have a science-based target, or will have committed to science-based targets by uh, 2026 at the, at the latest. So a, a, a pretty um, broad range of, of commitment, very ambitious. And now, so that's for the, the official uh, science-based target, but maybe you would like to know more about what we are doing internally and what we are committing uh, to in, in our operations. And we have, as much as, as a company, when you raise a strategy, particularly in front of your shareholders and in front of the, the market, um, you give a set of financial KPIs. The, that's your economic plan. And we have, of course, one. But in parallel to it, and that's, the, that's where we're saying we put sustainability at the center of the strategy, we have raised a list of six uh, very strong commitments by 2030 from a sustainability, sustainability perspective. The first one is that we commit to design 100% of our products, of our packaging products, uh, to become recyclable, compostable, or reusable by, by 2030. Second, that we will use 100% of a um, fiber that is from um, recycled or certified sources. Third, that we will use more than 80% of raw material that is coming from renewable sources, and we may come back to that. This is extremely important. Um, more than 90% of our industrial waste will be recycled. 100%, I mentioned it before, 100% of our electricity will come from renewable source. And we commit to make our uh, manufacturing operations um, a carbon neutral by 2030. So how do we do that? Well, obviously, it's not because, you know, uh, centrally we are uh, giving very ambitious targets that it's going to happen uh, by itself. So we have um, 81 factories in the world. Each site in our uh, organization across the five continents each site has a sustainability roadmap. This is something new implemented this year um, in order for each of the sites to contribute. And we are measuring. We have established since Q3 last year, so a year ago, um, a sustainability dashboard, which we are publishing regularly. So we are being transparent about the progress. We are measuring our progress like we are measuring the progress on the economic uh, side of, of, of the, the business. Now, Coming back to one of the aspects of, of your question, which I understand is more about um, recycling. Obviously, the recycling of post-consumption post packaging and packaging waste is essential. That's a, the, the, maybe the most visible, but as well the most complex part of, the, of creating a, a circular economy. So to do that, a, obviously, a company like ours cannot pretend to do it alone. This is not a one single company show. It's, it's a value chain responsibility. And when I say value chain, I believe it's a, I would even say it's an entire society responsibility. What I mean with this is that it involves, of course, our suppliers, ourselves, our customers, 
but it involves as well the infrastructure that there is in the society or sometimes that there isn't enough in the society for recollecting and for recycling, but it involves as well the consumers who have to be willing to sort the waste and and um, uh, and then ending up uh, or enabling their, their waste to go to, to recycling. So we are doing a lot with our partners, suppliers, customers, um, and, and the authorities in, in all the countries where we are operating in order to influence this aspect of infrastructures. We are as well um, part uh, and, and founders sometimes of industry associations to influence um, uh, rapidly the emergence of this circular economy. Uh, for instance, I could, I could give the example of uh, an, an association we created two years ago, which is called uh, Forever Green, which is an organization which has for objective to improve the circular economy the circularity of fiber-based packaging. We are members as well um, of CFLEX, which is an organization that is as well dedicated uh, to improve the circularity of uh, this time flexible packaging, since we have different technologies. Um, and, and, and we are taking actions as well uh, as a company to do things better in the world. At the same time as we were working um, since uh, the last over the last two years, we we stayed on some educational program in different countries in in the world. Uh, we have been working on some other initiatives, very focused. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you one example that was in India, for instance. Well, in India, we have worked together on education uh, with waste state, but we had another initiative in India, which was about uh, developing um, and um, installing um, on the base of funds paid by Hutemaki. Um, um, an equipment that is cleaning a river, the Miti River near Mumbai in, in India, cleaning the river from the waste and then bring it to the, uh, the next recycling plant. Uh, we are investing as well uh, in, in a recycling operation in India. So lots of different initiatives together with the value chain, but as well as, as a company to, to help um, the sustainability in the world to help the, the future for the, the, the next generations and as well to be true and walk the talk of the commitments we are taking through these um, science-based targets. Wow, thank you, Charles. That's a really interesting and comprehensive response. And it was just to pick up on what you were saying about the, the supply chain. I like to think of it more as a web, really, than one single chain, isn't it? Because everything is so interconnected. And you're absolutely right that we all need to play our part and, and do what we can. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, super. So what I'd like to ask you about now then, please, um, is you mentioned in your article as well that Hutamaki is working on innovations for sustainability. Um, so could you tell me what your focus is here? For example, is it on a particular material? I know you mentioned paperboard and flexible packaging earlier. Or is it on a particular application? For example, food waste packaging. Um, and could you give an example of the kind of innovation that we can expect to see in the coming years, please? So I would say innovation is, of course, a very broad topic when it comes to innovation for, for sustainability. Um, before giving you examples, maybe I'd like to give a perspective on what are the priorities that we are uh, looking into. Because there are actually quite a, a range of aspects that we need to, if we want to influence and create this true circular economy, there are it's not just about recycling that we mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, and that is very important for everyone to understand and particularly for consumers to understand. Sustainability is not just recycling. So the first um, axis of um, priority for us, we are prioritizing, we want to prioritize more and more through our innovation, the use of renewable resources. I mentioned before, our, today we are at 66% uh, of our materials our raw materials are renewable. We want to climb this to more than 80%. That's the axis, axis num number one. Second, we want to participate to create infrastructure for um, recollection and recycling. The innovation has to be uh, enabling this, but the innovation has to enable as well that the products that we are producing are recyclable, technically recyclable. And, and, and that's, that's why we have taken the commitment I was mentioning before about 
having 100% of our products being designed for recyclability. We want to make a, as well a, the collection and recycling economically sustainable, if I may say. Um, many would say, well, recycling is not sustainable from an economic point of view. And of course, if it's all done manually, it's not, it's not viable. Nowadays, we have a chance, we have an opportunity, that's digitalization. So we want to enable the um, sustainable or vi economically viable recollection and sort sorting and recycling of, uh, of the waste, thanks to digitalization. We want to work with, as I said before, um, partners so that we are, it's not one single company that is going to be able to innovate. Material technology is very complex. We need to partner between uh, companies in the value chain uh, and, and join forces, if I may say, uh, in order to, to have the right uh, type of innovation. And, and then I think uh, innovation for sustainability has to involve education of, of consumers um, because, you know, we can make all the products of the world being recyclable if we don't have the infrastructure and if we don't have the right responsible behavior across the world from all consumers, then uh, we won't create that circular economy. So I, I think it's important to understand that it's, it's a complete loop uh, that, that we are um, embarked in. And, and then the innovation, of course, we think about innovation about the product, but the innovation has to do as well with the production process in order to make our uh, manufacturing operations more sustainable with less emissions. But we need to as well uh, have innovation about the post use. So what happens after the, the consumption uh, by consumers? You know, very often we, we think that uh, um, when we hear about products being compostable, we say, well, that's fantastic, that's the best because we think that, okay, then it disappears, but actually it's not the best. The best is recycling. Why? Because compostability, at the end, you have a product that has no value anymore. Eventually it disappears. Uh, I'm saying eventually it's a bit more complex than this, but eventually it disappears. Recycling has, is giving a second life, a new value, eventually with a different type of product or different type of applications, but it's a, a creating a second value. And why not in some cases, more and more values because you can create many uh, life cycles. For instance, you know, if I take an example of one of our products, molded fiber for X packaging, well, the fiber cartons for X packaging are recyclable almost in unlimited manner. So we say industrially, we usually, we have a, a criteria of seven times, but it's, it's actually quite unlimited. So it's very important that we, uh, deliver on, on, on all those aspects uh, and you, you were asking about examples so I, I won't uh, you know um, um, escape from giving you examples because we have very interesting uh, things happening and, and more and more I would say so if I take the last uh, month uh, you know couple of examples of where our company has been launching new sustainable products I would take a, for instance a, the fiber trays so fiber tries for um, ready meals, particularly in the UK, which is a, it's, it's a major channel um, of consumption in the UK, the ready meals, um, which are sold through retailers. And we have launched a new, a new try made of fiber, fully compostable, fully recyclable, made entirely of renewable material, which replaces the uh, black plastic uh, trays that we know um, for anyone who is uh, uh, living or, or traveling to the UK. Second, we have a, a very recently, and, and this has been awarded, we have very recently, it has been rewarded as the best sustainable product 2021 when it comes to a bio-based uh, product. We have recently um, a conceived and, and, and launched a, what we call the fiber cup and fiber leads. So where, when you were buying, you know, uh, without making any reference to any brand, but you're buying your drink in a paper cup, um, it was uh, often covered with a pa uh, plastic lid. Yeah. And with our technology, we have now a fiber lid, which is made 100% of renewable resource, so of wood fiber, so renewable, 
compostable and recyclable. It had uh, the, the award of the best sustainable product or bio product uh, very recently. We have launched the paper straws, for instance, that replace the plastic straws. We have launched um, two years ago and regularly deploying more and more applications of what we call our Blue Loop uh, platform, that is the a flexible packaging becoming recyclable, so being a multi-layer that you know the, the consumer sees only one one layer, but actually it's a very complex packaging made multi-layer of multi-material. We convert it into being a multi-layer of a mono-material, and therefore it becomes um, a recyclable. So you know I don't want to overwhelm you with examples, but we have permanently and recently, um, well actually a year ago. Uh, time flies. We were launching in October 2020 um, uh, the first um, flexible packaging for pet food, um, for wet pet food, um, based on uh, recycled content. So we had recycled uh, PET in, in, um, included into the composition of 30%. 30% of the package is, is, is made of it. And recently for the healthcare industry, for the pharmaceutical industry, we uh, launched a new solution, which is called Push Tab Paper, which is when you take, you know, a, a pill or a, a medicament of any kind that is on a plastic blister with a, a, an aluminium layer uh, on top. Then now, we, with our product, it's replaced by a, a fully paper solution. So, lots of examples showing our, our commitment to, to innovation in all the range, as I said, from renewable material, production process, post-consumption recycling. That's brilliant. Thank you, Charles. That's such an interesting um, response. And, you know, I, I think packaging technology is a wonderful thing. You know, it protects our products and food and so on before it reaches the consumer. Uh, but also as a waste manager, um, especially working in lower income countries, you know, we quite often see what ends up at the dump site. And that's the stuff that exactly. just can't be recycled for whatever reason. So it's really great to hear that companies, um, you know, at the beginning of that that supply chain, um, you know, in terms of consumer packaging, um, that you are really thinking about, you know, what happens next and um, once it becomes a waste. So, um, yeah, thank you. Some really interesting innovations and we'll for sure be looking into those more over the coming weeks and months, I'm, I'm sure. Um, right, we've just got one more question for you then. Uh, thank you very much. So the final question is, um, there is increasing pressure on businesses to be thinking about the bottom line and Hootamaki is working towards a range of targets, including social value, vision 2045, oh, sustainable development goals, and most recently, your climate targets. How do you approach balancing shareholder value with the need to meet these goals, which might not be profitable in the short term? That, that's a very good question, because we, we often think that sustainability is or working for the sustainability of the planet and the future is only a cost. And, and actually, it's not. It's a, it's a value. But I'd like maybe to bounce back on something you, you said uh, as you were um, transiting to this question is um, you mentioned about the ways that we are seeing. And, and, and this is extremely important because this, this is what consumers, anyone in society sees and keeps in mind, and not only in mind, in, in, in his heart. Okay? That, that's, you know, we, we, we often think that packaging is the prime because this is, what, this is the waste you see, unfortunately, because you know, it's not well sorted or not well collected. Now, I'd like to put things in perspective uh, and give maybe a little bit of facts that would um, give a better understanding of really what matters in the world. And the food systems are, of course, of essence for, for, for the world in, in general, and even more in the future, because, you know, in, a, in just 10 years' time from 2020 to 2030, we will be 1.2 billion people more on the planet. Um, so all people... Uh, the, in, the, in the planet, we will be close to 9 billion people will have to eat and eat well, which is not the case of many people today. We have close to 10% of the people in the world that don't eat well. Now, why am I saying that? It's because the food system, of course, are there for us to live, to first survive, live and live well. Now, the food systems have an impact on the environment. 
Now, what is this impact? The 80% of the impact uh, of the food systems, 80% is linked to the production of the, of the food. The packaging that is often seen as the problem, and I'll come back to the value, packaging that is seen often as the, as the problem is 5%. So 5% is not nothing and needs to be managed. But it's 5% of the food system. Now, what is the big issue on the environment due to food systems? It's not the packaging. Packaging represents a 1% of the global greenhouse gas emission. This 1% is 1% too much. This 1% we need to work, and that's basically based on your questions. I try to explain all we are doing to reduce this 1% of global greenhouse gas emission linked to food packaging. But the big issue is food waste. One third of the of the food that we have in the in the world produced, one third of the food in in the world is um, actually um, wasted, and that represents ten percent. That represents ten percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions. So it's very important to understand that the number one priority is to reduce food waste. This food waste happens from food production, the logistics involved in the value chain as well the way we consume. So how do you reduce food waste? Well, the first, uh, of course, uh, responsibility is with consumers to buy and the right quantities, the right products, so that we consume everything we buy. But at the same time, uh, to help the consumer, we need to have the right packaging. And the right packaging, not just because of the right sizing or the right uh, volume uh, bought by the consumers, but because packaging has an immense value in terms of extending the shelf life of the products, therefore avoiding the, 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 the food to be spoiled or, or wasted. And, and that's extremely important. Another very important value of, of the packaging is that, and it's, you know, as we are soon hopefully coming out of this pandemic, eh, the pandemic has been there to remind us the importance of hygiene. Hygiene, and if I extend this to, to food, to food the, the importance of food safety. So there are tremendous values of, of the packaging. What we need to do is to better um, manage, of course, the food waste, but as well, of course, allow the consumer to have more sustainable solutions, more sustainable uh, packaging. So now I wanted to say that because, you know, often, Packaging is seen as the problem, and I believe packaging is part of the solution. And I believe that the value of packaging is much higher than its impact on the environment. I'm strongly believe, uh, a strong believer of, of this. And, and this, uh, therefore, goes into the context of uh, what, uh, for instance, the, the, the United Nations are, you know, embedding into their... Um, a sustainable development goals, which is a, a very broad perspective to a, how to create a better world tomorrow. And, and, and that's why in our business, we are a, very committed to support those, um, those SDGs, those sustainable development goals, because we believe that if, um, if all companies, if all industries are rallying and supporting those different goals, and not all of them at the same time, but you know, we complement each other, then we can really have an impact on, on the future. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why in, in our company, and, and that links to, to your question on, on the shareholders' value, because we, we strongly believe that we have a, a society a responsibility. That's why we are supporting the, 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 the SDGs and, and specifically focusing on the ones that we believe are more relevant for us, which are the SDG 8 for, for sustainable growth, or the um, SDG 12 about sustainable consumption, as well as the, the SDG 13 about uh, reducing the, the climate impact. Uh, all of this is extremely important for us, as well as the SDG 6 for the water management and the uh, SDG 15 about forest management, responsible forest management. I'm, I'm giving those SDGs as examples because that, we are not covering with, in, with our company. We're not focusing on all of them. We're focusing on the ones where we can have an impact. And, and I strongly believe that if we all do that, um, then um, rallying all together in a consolidated way, um, complementing each other, 
uh, then we will have a, a better world for, for, the, for the future. And, and I'd like to say in summary that uh, today, uh, there is no contradiction between investing for a better future, investing for a sustainable, uh, profitable growth. In there, it says profitable, but it says sustainable. And, and the two things go hand in hand. I don't believe that it's possible to dream anymore of profitable growth if you're not driving it for the sustainability um, of, of the planet. So this is really going hand in hand. And this is why um, we have made it hand in hand in our company strategy. That's brilliant. It's so good to hear because, you know, from, from a waste aid perspective, obviously we get to deal with uh, materials and packaging and waste once it's reached its the end of its life and it's become a waste. And um, so it's, you know, very, very uh, great to hear that um, packaging companies are looking at this in a more holistic way, looking at, looking at packaging and products through their entire life cycle and, you know, not getting distracted by some of the, um, you know, more, you um, some of the bigger headlines when actually, you know, keeping our eyes on the prize basically and making sure that we're all still working together through that 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 chain or that web, if you like, of all the different supply chain players um, to, to bring about a more sustainable future. So yeah, brilliant to hear Charles. Thank you so much for giving us your time um, and very Thank interesting you. insights into uh, the progress that Hutamaki is making and the commitments that you've made. Um, this has been a really interesting discussion. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we're looking forward to meeting you at COP26. Um, Absolutely. And just, thank you. And just to say uh, to the listeners, for more perspectives on what action needs to be taken with waste to reduce global climate change emissions, please visit us at wasteaid.org forward slash COP26. Thanks once again. Bye-bye. Thank you.